deep is gone My heart is full of sorrow I can't believe How much I've let you down I dread the pain That waits for me tomorrow When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory will take the time care for one like me but I read in the Bible that old story how he pled for my forgiveness while he was dying on a tree please forgive me need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me.
That star is Jesus Christ Who came to give his life On Calvary's cross Christ was paid in full If you will believe Then you will receive Eternal life And all it is true Papa said to read the word It's the voice of God you heard it's the power of God to all who believe. It's peace to the troubled soul. It's God's hidden gold. It's Moses' is rock to all who achieve. I said he's coming soon. Could be morning, night, or noon. Pays to have your name in the book of life. You may be the upper class, you may be running fast, or you may be the world's biggest crew. That star is Jesus Christ, who came to give his life on Calvary's cross. Christ was paid in full. If you will believe, then you will receive. Eternal life and all it ensures.
Moses sat the burning bush, burning bush, burning bush. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, and I am the Lord thy God. So take your shoes off, Moses, your own holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off. Sleep is gone, my 
heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe how much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory will take the time care for one like me but I read in the Bible that old story how he pled for my forgiveness while he was dying on a tree please forgive me need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Welcome everybody to Hickok Baptist Church tonight. Always good to be in the Lord's house. I didn't get a bath, so y'all stay away from me. I didn't come out of the hayfield. I didn't get a bath. Y'all kind of stay up downwind, you know. But uh, anyhow, Lord knows all about that. Uh, but I'm here. I'm here. He wants us to be faithful, too. Uh, remember the... Uh, Deadline for the trip to Popple's Farm is October the 19th. The trip itself will be October the 16th. Uh, of course, let's back up just a minute. Just, Cooter, how about open it up in prayer? Give me, Lord, for getting that. But uh, the trip actually going to be October 16th. Deadline is night for signing up. Uh, church conference will be on the 16th, night of the 16th. Fall festival. We still need some wrap, individual wrap candy. I believe the sign said that out there, didn't it? I believe the sign said fall festival. Trying to invite people. Uh, so spread the word, spread the word. Say, come, come join us. See how good the Lord is. Turn our attention to our prayer lesson. That seems to grow, and, but that's all right. So uh, we we need to pray for these people. The Lord wants us to. They want us to. Uh, they need a prayer, and some of us need to practice. Uh, 
But anyhow, we got a list here, and we'll call them out. I think we already read some of them, but it's all right. Mention them again, because we don't want to forget. Melissa Blocker and her co-workers, they already gone? Okay. Left Monday, be flying back tomorrow. Continue to pray for traveling mercies for. Gail Nee had her, uh, Gail Robertson had knee surgery and she's taking therapy now. And Lamar said we're doing well with it. Adam Wilson, who was in the wreck over here, he still hadn't opened his knee to operate on it and he's got some facial cuts. Now he's in Savannah Hospital. Ron and Ethan prays and uh, Bryce Hennick prays that, as far as we know, they wasn't hurt of them being bruised. Scared. Uh, then you remember Cannon Ruiz and his treatments, his family down there with him. Then you remember Paul Thomas going through a bad time. Uh, Joe Cruz he took off part of his foot. Wonder Ralph having some stomach issues besides other issues that she's got. Ronnie still laid up. And the Ralph's great grandbaby. Can you remember Allison? Storm victims, Mark Haynes. Andrew Miller, two-year-old in the hospital in Florida, can't find out what's causing his problem. So remember him? Myla Grammer, the four-year-old, possibly kidney, kidney transplant. Remember Larry McMillan family? He passed away. Remember Amy Alder John? She's in the Savannah Hospital with heart issues. Uh, don't really know. Said one time they're gonna put a pacemaker in. Now they're talking about doing a, uh, a blazing, I think. So she needs our prayer. Jim Henry, Miss Mickey's brother, needs prayer for him. Uh, Denise Brook got issues, sick. Dinky Bird, she's in Memorial Hospital in Jacksonville, blood clots. And She's had several surgeries, not doing well. Uh, Daddy Wainwright, need your prayers. What's going up? Now, this, this person don't need the prayers, he just uh, needs our congratulations. Randall Howard was the teacher of the month. The students voted on him out there. He, he must have really bribed them, you reckon? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Candy bar, brother. But he's a student of the month. The student voted on him. Uh, congratulations for that. Anybody else we need to add or take off our list? No. Judith Hawkins, Violet's problem. That's the newest member we got in church, y'all. If y'all don't know who she is, got the Walker sets up here usually. Remember her? Anybody else? Unspoken. Brother Mike, how about lifting these up for?
You also remember the coal miner's daughter's family so she passed away too. I came up listening to her a lot in time class. Thank you. Y'all went to school together, didn't you, Brother Larry? All right, let's all stand. Good evening to everybody. We'll sing a couple. One's going to run right into the other. So we'll, we'll sing both of them together. Genesis chapter 40. Actually, I'm going to back up in 39 to verse 20 and pick us up where we left off Sunday night with the story of Joseph, uh, the slave. Joseph got sold into slavery uh, by his brothers. 
Ishmaelites carried him into Egypt. He was uh, bought there and put in service with a man by the name of Potiphar. And the Lord's, was, uh, the, the Lord's blessing was upon him. And uh, he was, uh, everything that he touched, the Bible says, prospered. And he and Potiphar had a great relationship, uh, insomuch that Potiphar didn't even check on him. Everything was going to be all right. And then as um, the devil would have it, he would enter into Potiphar's wife and try to get David to lie with her. And uh, when he would not, after a couple of times, uh, she lied about him. And when Potiphar found out, uh, she said that he did and he didn't and uh, wound up in prison. Uh, I know sometimes in our life we go through some things. It's just like one time we get out of one, we end another, we end another. But let me tell you, there's reasons for all that stuff. We may not ever know them, but we may look at them and, and realize why it's so up and down. You know, it seems like tragedy sometimes comes in bunches. Uh, but anyway, uh, you stay true to God and he'll stay true to you. And uh, good will always come out of it. Uh, but now he's in jail. Uh, an amazing thing about that, that even though he was uh, downtrodden, uh, we find out in this chapter, chapter 40, that it was bothersome to him uh, that he was there, but he never stopped serving God. That's an amazing thing. But if you would, uh, as we honor the reading of God's Word, let's look at verse 20. You stand there. We'll read through the end of the chapter before we get into chapter 40. It says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. If that would have been said, could you imagine what the prisoners say? You mean this is favor of God? He's showing you favor by putting you in prison? And the keeper of the prison uh, committed to Joseph, uh, Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, he was the doer of it. Uh, the, the keeper of the prisons looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that he... Uh, that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. Let's pray. Father, tonight, again, as we look in your word, and now it helps us understand, Father, why sometimes bad things happen to God's people. God, they're there for a reason. They're there for a purpose. And God, uh, we, we don't pray for those times, but God, if we do fall into those things, we pray uh, that you will go with them, and I know you will. Uh, Father, if they will do what they, uh, Joseph done here, he stayed loving you and he, he kept serving you. He was faithful, and God let us be that too. Help us tonight, Lord, as we understand your word. Lord, that we would un, uh, put this in our mind and our hearts. Lord, that we could uh, face the tomorrow better than we did today. Father, knowing that our lives is in your hands. Go with us now. And all God's people said, Amen. As we look upon that, we see that uh, it's almost like immediately. We don't know how, what time lapse had happened, but surely uh, the, the prison guard uh, knew a little bit about Joseph. And you say, well, why would you think that? Well, I think a lot of people knew about Joseph uh, and all the many things uh, that he'd done. You know, you got to remember, I want you to remember back when we first started with this, that Joseph uh, was also... Uh, one that dreams would come to, and he, he, he spoke of those dreams. Well, Joseph, not only that, he, he could interpret those dreams, and we'll see that in this, in this chapter as well. But here he is in prison, and everything that was done in the prison, it was done at the hands of Joseph, and the, the jailer put him uh, there, and he, not only was he there to see that it was done, the Bible says that he was a doer of it. So he did the same things that everyone else done. He led by example. That's how I see that. He was, he was the leader of it. Now, I'm, I'm sure it was chores and stuff that uh, probably wasn't favorable to some, but it was always to benefit the king and his uh, kingdom there. So um, he's doing that, uh, and, and he is, uh, the Lord is prospering him and everything. It's amazing that everything he done, God prospered. He was good at it. You know, I've seen people like that. They're just 
take a little old something and turn something into it, and it just uh, becomes prosperous. But in verse in chapter four, uh, chapter forty, uh, verse one, it says this, and it came to pass that after these things, the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was wroth uh, was wroth against against two of his officers, against the chief of the butler and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the, uh, the captain of the guard into the prison, uh, the place where Joseph was bound. Now, we know that that wasn't such a bad place to be. Uh, that wouldn't be a, such a bad place to be because uh, who wouldn't want to be if you had to be shut up? I'd rather be shut up with someone like that than a negative, uh, pessimistic uh, person that, you know, you know him. And, and, you know, just one like that. Here we had an optimistic guy that was prosperous. He loved the Lord. He prayed. And, uh, and no telling what all he done, but he led by example. And they, they really followed him. So um, uh, we really don't know what the, uh, the chief butler and the chief baker done. But, uh, you know, they fed a lot of folks there. But the main one with the pleas was the king. And something went awry. And uh, he got mad with them and he threw them in jail. He just flat. It must have been pretty serious, I think. Uh, I do know that this uh, particular pharaoh could be a little uh, angry at times, and he could be hard to hard to live with. Uh, but whatever the case is, he's mad with them. And it says in verse four, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he and he served them, and they con- continued a season in war. And then, and, and, and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream. The butler and the baker of the kings of Egypt were bound in prison. And Joseph came in unto them the morning, and he looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. Do you notice that they were with him, but it's kind of like Joseph, uh, what do they call the ones that trustees uh, you know at, at jail sometimes you got trustees that can come and go and wash cars and get outside and pick up they, they can do those kind of things go get the meals uh, from the restaurant and bring them back they, I believe he was like a trustee because he was trustworthy and, and he comes in and I guess he opens their jail cell uh, to start the day off and and he looks at them and they were sad and uh, he don't know at this time that both of them had dreamed the same dream now how ironic is that that Two men would dream the same dream. But it was bothersome to them because they had dreamed something and they didn't know the meaning of it. They had no idea. And no, neither did they know that the man that was walking before them had a, 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 a gift from God that uh, he could interpret those dreams. It says in um, verse 7, And he asked Pharaoh's officers uh, that were with him in the in the ward of the of the Lord's house, saying, "He says, Wherefore look ye so sadly today?" Well, one thing they says because we're in jail. No, well, it didn't appear that that bothered Joseph. And he says, and they said unto him, "We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it." And Joseph said unto them, "He says, Do not do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you." Well, if, if they belong to God, then here's God's man, even though he's a prisoner and he's been sold into slavery and now he, you know, he's, got a, he's got a rap sheet, but yet there's really no truth to none of what was done. He was not guilty of any of those things, but yet he was marked as one of them. He says, you notice the little pitch he throws in about God. You know, uh, well, isn't God the interpreter of dreams? Don't he know that? Well, tell me what they were. He didn't say that, tell me what they were and I'll tell you what they mean. He says, tell me what they are. And that was the first step for them to do it. They were believing and they trusted him to tell him because they were scared. They didn't know what that thing meant. And uh, now they're going to find out. It says, and they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter. Verse 9, it says, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said, and said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine, he says, there were three branches. And it was as though it budded. 
It says, and his blossoms shot forth, and the cluster thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and, and, pre and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, he says, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are the three days, and yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head and restore thee into the place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup uh, unto his into his hands after the former manner which thou was his butler. Boy, what good news. What good news. But the thing was, you got to wait three days. Now, could you imagine the three days that was going on, the, 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 the unknown. Is he correct in this? I believe every morning when he would come down there, I believe their countenance was a lot fairer than it had been because at least there was some hope in this. And Joseph would act in no doubt that it would happen because God, God supported him and God gave him the meaning of these things. And Joseph said, you know, it looks like a bright future for you guys. It really does. We're going to find out the other dream in just a minute. He says, in verse 14, he says, but think on me. Now, this is what I told you earlier, that Joseph was acting satisfied and somewhat content where he was at. But with this dream, and that's all he knew was this dream, that if he got out, he wanted him to remember him and, what he, and the kind of person he was because the butler was very important to the king. And it says... Yet in three days uh, that he would lift him up and he would come out. Verse 14, it says this. He says, but think on me when it shall be well with thee. Think on me. Or in other words, remember me when you get out. Remember me when you get out there. Don't, 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 don't forget me uh, and what's happened here. He says, and show kindness. Not just remember me and not show me no kindness, but just remember me. He says, I pray thee unto thee. He says, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. He says, for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. He says, and here also have I done nothing. He says, that, that they uh, should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, he says, oh, I also had a dream. Now, here's two guys going to reap the rewards of the other of the one of them's dream and now the other one's come going to confess fess up and says well I had a dream too the same night the same night so everything was looking good and Joseph was reminding him you got to know he says if y'all would just think kindly of me he says remember you yeah, speak of me to Pharaoh what kind of guy I am uh, you know because I want to get out of here I want to get out of this house you know I, I know what it's like to to be on the outside, I mean, I was at Potiphar's house, and, you know, I'd done all, I, I know what it's like. I'm not trying to, to leave the kingdom or anything like that. I just want to get out of here. Just get me out of here. But the other guy spoke up and said, well, I have a dream too. So, and, and he says, uh, when he saw that the, the chief baker uh, saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, he says, I also was in the dream, uh, was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And uh, in the utmost basket, he says, there was all manner of ba uh, baker's meat uh, for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, he says, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head from off of thee, and thou shalt hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat shall eat thy flesh from off of, off of thee. Ooh, not so good a news. Not so good a news. Three days and one of them's going to be out and put back in his place, and one of them's going to be out and, and Pharaoh is uh, going to hang him on a tree and behead him, and his flesh will be eaten by the fowls of the air. You know, it's amazing that the stamina that Joseph has in the Lord, that he was willing to interpret the good dream but yet even in sad times and with bad news he also gave a true uh, interpretation with God you know sometimes it's placed upon men to have to say things that may be not pleasant but as long as they're of the truth of God uh, then we don't need to hold back we need to lay it all just like it is uh, I, I for one don't want to uh, 
water down anything of the Word of God just so it would please everybody's ears. You know, what I want to do is give you the truth of God and let the Holy Spirit do a work. And, you know, I think, honestly, I think sometimes people think that I know everybody's situation, and I don't. And, uh, but God does. And his message is delivered to whoever, and it's interpreted according to what your need is and, and, and how you absorb that. And uh, sometimes it's, it's great news, and sometimes, you know, oh, it ain't so bad especially when the preacher might say something. I, you know, sometimes people go out the door and say, well, you, you stepped all over my toes. Ah, uh, you got me here. And you, I'm, I'm, I, 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 didn't, I didn't do nothing, you know. Uh, I just done what the Lord told me to do. And if, if it was your toes that's hurting, I he probably meant to hit you in the heart, you know. Uh, but he's got you to thinking. It's just um, what you say and a thing like that, you know. Well, God bless you. You keep, keep praying, you know. Maybe... You need to work in the area that it struck you, or well, whatever it may be. But Joseph uh, told him the dream thereof, and, and verse 20 it says, And it came to pass on the third day, he says, which was Pharaoh's birthday, uh, that he had made a feast until all of his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his uh, butlership again and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them wow could you imagine you reckon for a moment one was glad that he was right and one was sad that he was right well my friend what it rec represents is what the word of God tells us about lost people and about saved people the end result, we're going to be lifted up and we're going to be carried home to be with the Lord. But them that know not him, we, why are we, they're going to be lifted up as well and they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. It's, it's, it's the, the two-sided um, coin of uh, what salvation means. You either accept it or you don't. And, here's, and we're going to know up front. It's like you don't. The, the, the interpretation of the dream, which is not a dream, but the interpretation of what God has for us here, you have a choice to serve God and miss hell. You have a choice to not serve God and go to hell. You know, it's one of those either way. And when people, uh, they may bypass this story. And some may chuckle later on in, in Egypt about uh, hearsay. You know, that old boy Joseph right there, he told that man that he was going to get hung. Maybe he said, but now he told him that he was going to get his job back. He was going to be restored. So thinking about what possibly could have been wrong, the difference fell between the butler and the baker, Okay. We, we can see there that that's something happened. And the interpretation of that, instead of Pharaoh making a fatal move and kill both of them, he gave it time. They were about a year in, in prison, and things worked out. I think maybe some evidence had, had come up, or maybe God nudged him in a way. We don't really know. But he sprung both of them out of jail at the same time, and here it was. So he made his decision based on evidence that he found, or what God had done. So uh, you, you remember when uh, Solomon was coming into uh, his, his king. The first thing that he ran into was the woman that stole the other baby's uh, woman's live baby. Her had di hers had died at night in the bed with her. And she stole it. And the, the way he come out, you know, his prayer was, he says, God, he says, what, what do you want? I give you, uh, you know, anything you ask for. He says, I want, the, uh, I want the ability to discern between what's right and wrong. I want the ability to discern between right or wrong. If you would ask 99% of the people in the world today that God is going to bless you with something, what would they ask? That would be not what they would ask for. But Solomon being the wisest man and being reared in the way that he was, feared the Lord and he says, you know what? If I'm going to obey you and do the things that I need to do, he says, I need to be able to discern between what's right. What is that? You, you, you know, what is that? You know, because uh, to, today it's all, it's all jumbled up. What used to be wrong now is right, and what's right now is wrong. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a jumbled up thing. It's because of the, the hardness of people's heart, uh, the way it is. But I got news for you. Hadn't changed a word in this book. Not one word of it has changed. And it, this is what's going to matter. 
It ain't the laws that's written and uh, rewritten through the Constitution and all the other things that they put in. It ain't that. It ain't that. You know, uh, scary news that, you know, uh, what, what possibly could happen. Uh, Congress is, is flirting with some stuff right now to uh, bring up a bill to help uh, young women with uh, illegitimate children to get their rights to uh, health care. And all like that. Well, why don't we spend the money teaching them the way of the cross, which means abstinence is the best way uh, not to get in that situation. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to reward you because you do that. And that's what the world's in. We reward sin now. Uh, even, even some states now arrest somebody, carry them in there, no bail. They turn them right back out on the street. Say, what kind is that? God is not that way. The Bible tells us he's a just God and he's a loving God. And he will correct us because on, that's why they called it the judgment seat. That's when the judge of all judges stands before mankind. And let me tell you, it don't matter what you say or how you beg. What, the way you lived, whether you accepted him or not, is what's going to be done. And when he drops the gavel down that that case is over with, then you shall depart to the place that you set yourself up to go. That's the way it is. These men, Pharaoh, he's done all this. He's, he, he, he beheaded that man on his birthday. You, you know, you would think that one guy would say, you know, there's no way anything bad could happen today. Joseph's just got to be wrong. It's his birthday. Well, a lot of things happened on some birthdays. If you remember uh, John the Baptist, what happened to his head on uh, somebody's birthday that they were celebrating, and uh, the little girl was going to get everything that Herod had to offer, or at least half of his kingdom. But his mama told her, says, you know, ask for the head of John the Baptist on her charter. So phew, that, that happened. Uh, you know, I think birthdays are good. The older I get, I mean, I used to love them as young because all the presents and all like that. Now I got older, I don't like birthdays because they're expensive. They always cost papa. But, uh, but, but then you get a look at it, I'm proud for every one of them. That means I live to be one more year older. So hallelujah either way. But we see this, the event that's happening, what's going on. It says, in uh, verse 23, it says, Yet uh, did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him. Sad. Sad. How did somebody that could rejoice that he is set free and the interpretation that Joseph gave him come to fruition and he was there to watch the other dream come true as, as gruesome as that was? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you have fear in your heart not to forget the guy that did that? I'm going, he is that close to God. He's got influence with God that much. I can't forget him. I must tell somebody. I got to tell somebody. You know, and that's what's sad about some people's uh, uh, salvation. Uh, you know, they go through the, they go through the motions, uh, but it's like we're going to keep it quiet. We, 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 we're, not, we're, gonna, we're not going to tell the world. Man, I, and, and still having all the pictures of all the people that do wrong in, in uh, Brantley County, I think we ought to have everybody's pictures on there when they're up there at the baptistry pool getting baptized because they gave their heart and life to Jesus Christ. The good news, the best news you could ever get, that someone accepted Christ and followed him with baptism. The Bible says that after they hung him on a tree, and they watched that happen, but they forgot Joseph. God won't forget you. Now, the next thing that goes on uh, in the next chapter, we, we won't get into it too far. I read on ahead, and, you know, it gets better. Joseph was not satisfied being in there. But what an opportunity. Could you imagine the chance for a testimony from this man that got set free back standing beside holding the cup of Pharaoh when someone of the ones that were under him could ask him, say, man, what was it like? What did he say, how terrible the prison was? He, he probably could, but it, the way it's written here, he never mentioned him, you know. I hope I don't ever live my life that, that someone could 
say either by the way I live or by the things I say that I, I did not demonstrate Christ in my life. Because, you know, that's, that's a big stumbling block. That's a big hindrance. Uh, and I'll be held accountable for those things. We must stay forward. But, you know, we don't see Joseph downtrodden. He shows up for work every day, and things get better for him, as you know, uh, on down the road. But sooner or later, not to get too far ahead, but Pharaoh has a dream. Someone that really means something. He's about ready to kill somebody else because they can't tell him what's going on, and that's what they're paid to do. And then somebody remembers. What do they remember? Well, they remember a guy that knows how to interpret dreams. But what comes out of that is they remember the power of God that was in him. It's not so much Joseph as it is the power of God that was in him. And you got to remember, I got to remember that. It's not, it's not me and it's not you. It's the power of God that's within us. We're pretty, we're pretty much nothing but because of the power of God. You know, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of preaching. I believe in the power of Sunday school. I believe in the power of, uh, of, uh, of all, all the things that we do in our church. I, I believe in the power of singing. But all boils down to is the power of the message of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whether it's sung, taught, or preached, it's the power of that. And how can we demonstrate that? The Bible tells us we know that we're saved because we have love one toward another. Now, not just of like faith, but also those that are not born again. How can you get them if they hate you? How can you get them if you have put them aside? You must love them as well. You know, I, I didn't get to watch it all, but something that, that kind of struck me. As bad as Ron DeSantis dislike. President Biden, in troublesome times today, they were actually caught within a couple of feet of one another. You know, it's, it, it's a time in this world when we need to lay all that other junk aside and we need to put God in the middle and show love one toward another in spite of their political differences. And, and I wouldn't just say political differences. I would say decision differences. Because there's been some decisions made. Uh, Y'all know how I feel, and I, I think I know how you feel. But what I'm saying is, at least they were man enough today to get up there. Two leaders, one a big leader and one pretty good sized leader, uh, up there. And maybe people could see that. Well, if two can get along enough to tolerate one another, to help hundreds of thousands of people, then that's what love is. Compassion. You know, it's, it's the very same thing that Jesus told his disciples when, when they were keeping the kids back. The Bible's description of why Jesus told his disciples to don't mess with them. If they want to come up here, let them come. The Bible says he had compassion on them. Was they obnoxious? Was they asking a lot of questions? Was some of them have boogers hanging out of those? Yeah, they had everything you could imagine that a kid did. But he had compassion on them. And then he told them, he says, such is the kingdom of heaven. That spiritually we have to come like that. We have to come with not any strings attached that we ho-hum give him undivided attention. So there it is. Today, we maybe a start, a turn of something. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, for the church to make that turn, we have got to show love one toward another. We're here to meet the needs of not just the lost, but not leave the lost out. We're, we're here to meet the needs of people spiritually and physically as much as possible. I pray that we do. Y'all have a great week. How many is enjoying this cool weather? Me too. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for men like Joseph, God, who in our minds had all right to be mad at the world, but, God, he, he just got closer to you. God, it seemed like that you put him on an island where he had no one else to lean on, but he knew who he could depend on. It was you. And, God, because of that, the Bible says he prospered. 
God, I, I, I thank you for that. And God, I pray, Lord, we would, we would be so close to you that what we do for you spiritually would prosper. Whether it's material things or not, but God, in the spirit and, the, and, and for the kingdom, God, that we would be prosperous in thy name. Help us, Lord, to, to be better spiritual business-wise. God, that your business is about the spiritual heart of people. And God, you don't want any to die and go to hell. Help us, Father. Let us enjoy this day. Thank you for the beautiful weather. And again, thank you, Lord, for moving the storm away. God, that we not suffer. God, I, I, I just truly thank you. And I knew it had to be your hand. I think you heard the prayers of your people. And there, again, you gave the desires of our hearts. We thank you. But bless those, Father, that did go through it. Let them also draw closer to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.